This is part 142 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using dynamic SQL in a stored procedure and its implications from SQL injection perspective. In a later video, we'll discuss the performance implications of using dynamic SQL in a stored procedure. In one of our previous videos, we have implemented this stored procedure SP Search employees. Notice this stored procedure does not contain any dynamic SQL. It's all static SQL and it is immune to SQL injection. This stored procedure is called by this page, search page without dynamic SQL.aspx. And if you remember in one of our previous videos, we tried to inject the SQL into the first name text box and when we click the search button, whatever we have typed in this text box is treated as the value for first name parameter. So our SQL injection attacks were not successful. Now, Let's create a stored procedure with dynamic SQL in it instead of static SQL like this. Let's make a copy of this procedure and let's name this new procedure SP Search Employees bad dynamic SQL. It is still going to have these four parameters within the body of the procedure. Let's declare a variable. Let's call it at SQL. The type is nvacar and let's set the size to maximum. We are going to use this variable to build our dynamic SQL statement. So set at SQL equals select star from employees where 1 equals 1. So that's our initial query and depending on whether these parameters are null or not, we are going to add the conditions dynamically. So let's check if the first name parameter is not null. If it is not null, then what do we want to do? We want to set at SQL equals whatever it has already got plus we want to add our condition here and first name equals whatever value we have got in this parameter and since the first name column is an nvar care column the value needs to be wrapped inside single quotes so let's include a single quote and then whatever value we have in this first name parameter and then we need to close the single quote. We need to do the same thing to build conditions for last name, gender and salary. Let's quickly do that. So here we have conditions for last name, gender and salary as well. And then finally, we want to execute the dynamic SQL statement that we have in this variable at SQL. And to do that, we are going to use the system stored procedure sp underscore execute SQL. And then to that, let's pass our dynamic SQL statement. So let's create this procedure, SP Search employees bad dynamic SQL. Now, notice within this stored procedure, we are building our dynamic SQL statement by concatenating strings instead of using parameters. And this is dangerous because it opened doors for SQL injection attacks. Let's actually prove that. Let's flip to Visual Studio now. This is the same project that we have been working with in our previous videos. To this project, let's add a new web form. Let's name it dynamic SQL and stored procedure dot ASPX. And let's copy whatever HTML we have on the other page and paste it on this new page that we have just created. So that should give us the same look and feel. Let's double click on the button to generate a click event handler and let's also copy the code behind code. So let's first copy the namespaces and then let's copy whatever code we have in the button click event handler and paste it within our new page. And let's change the name of the procedure. The name of the procedure that we have just created is SP Search Employees Bad Dynamic SQL. So let's copy that and paste it right here. So this stored procedure has got the same parameters as the other stored procedure. So we don't have to change any of this code. So with all these changes, let's run our application by pressing Control F5. Here is the page. Before we do anything, let's quickly go back to SQL Server. Notice here we have a database called SalesDB. Now let's try to inject SQL into this first name text box. 
let's inject the same SQL that we injected in our previous videos, drop database sales DB. Because we have built our dynamic SQL statements within this procedure by concatenating strings, this is prone to SQL injection. So when we click the search button, the command is executed and the sales DB database is dropped. At the moment we still see it, but when we refresh the databases folder, notice sales DB database is gone. So this stored procedure is prone to SQL injection attacks. Now let's rewrite this procedure using parameters instead of concatenating strings like this. So let's make a copy of this procedure, fire up a new query editor window, and let's name our new procedure SP Search Employees Good Dynamic SQL. And within this procedure, we're going to use parameters instead of concatenating strings. So let's delete that and set first name equals at fn. So our parameter name here is fn. Similarly, let's set the parameter for last name as at ln. And for gender, let's set it to at gen. And finally, for salary, let's set it to at sal. Now when we call our SP execute SQL system store procedure, we also have to specify the declarations for these parameters, fn, ln, gen, and salary. So let's do that here. So at fn is of type envercare, and let's set the size to 50. Let's do the same thing for last name parameter as well. So the last name parameter is at ln, and this is also of type envercare. And gender is also of type envercare, whereas salary is of type integer. So let's change the type here from envercare to integer. And then finally, we need to supply values for these parameters, fn, ln, gen, and salary. And where are the values for those parameters going to come from? They're coming from these stored procedure parameters. So at fn equals at first name. Similarly, at ln equals at last name. And at gn equals at gender. And finally, at cell equals at salary. So let's execute this to create the stored procedure. Stored procedure created. Now let's copy the name of this procedure and then call that procedure from this page dynamic SQL in stored procedure. Let's run our application one more last time by pressing Ctrl F5. Here is the page. Now let's go back to SQL Server. Let's create a new database. Let's call it sales DB. So we have our sales DB database created. Now let's try to inject the same SQL. Drop database sales DB and let's click the search button. Completed. Now let's refresh the databases folder. Notice we still have the sales DB database. So whatever value we have typed in this first name text box, it is treated as the value for this parameter at fn instead of executing that as a SQL command. So we don't have our sales DB database dropped. So in this case, our application is immune to SQL injection attacks. So here is the summary. Whether you're creating dynamic SQL in a client application, for example, like an ASP.NET web application, or in a stored procedure, always use parameters instead of concatenating strings. Using parameters to create dynamic SQL statements prevents SQL injection attacks. Here is that example of the stored procedure where we are building our dynamic SQL statements by concatenating strings, which is prone to SQL injection attacks. Whereas in this example, we are building our dynamic SQL statements using parameters, which makes our application immune to SQL injection attacks. Thank you for listening and have a great day.